Welcome to Couch Time. My name is Martin. I'm Sterling. And I'm Daniel. And, and we're, we're nerds, nerds and stuff. stuff. Now here at Nerds and Stuff, we do a lot of fun things. Um, and one of the fun things we just did is go to Gen Con. So we'll be talking about all that shit right now. This place. This time. That's probably where I cut to the bumper, though. Oh, fine. This the bump to the camera. You, you stalled. You, you waited too long. See, I give you cut options. Bumper. Today we're going to be talking about Gen Con, and uh, for me this was my third time going. For these two, it was their first, their cherry popping time. So, but before we get into the gritty details of Gen Con, um, we're going to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon backers. So I'm going to start by saying, Emma Baird, thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Emma. Uh, Daniel Sheldon, thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Daniel. Junior Zamora, thank you. Thanks, Junior. Thanks, Junior. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, J. Patrick Walker, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Jenny Ottaway, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jenny. Jenny. Welcome back as well. <laughs> uh, Justin Briscoe, thank you so much. Thanks, thank Justin. You, Justin. Uh, Kat Pretzer, thank you. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. Hey, you've been here the whole time. Love you, Kat. <laughs> uh, Kelly Baker, thanks Kelly. a lot, Kelly. Thanks, Thanks. Kelly. <laughs> uh, McKenna Bailey, hello. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, McKenna. <laughs> Uh, Sean Putnam. Thank you, Thank Sean. You, Sean. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Stephen Dewey. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And Thomas Privil. Thanks, Thomas. Thomas, thank you. Thomas. Thank you so much. Tomas. If yeah, that's, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Tomas. If Sterling's butchering it, then please just like just let us know. crucify him in thank the comments. You. It's my fault. Either way, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you. you. All right, so... Thank you to all our Patreon backers. If you want our, if you want your name awkwardly read out loud, uh, we do that time, really well. We'll we'll do it for you too. You just have to go to patreoncom slash nerds and stuff. Uh, now on to the nitty gritty stuff. As soon as we get past updates, ah, I got you. <laughs> I'm oh, a dick. Got, got me. Oh hi, Mark. We were going straight there. <laughs> hi. No, um, <laughs> not here. We watched the room recently. It's as bad uh. as it is good. All right, so first thing we're going to talk about is campaign updates. We're going to do some channel updates real quick. Um, obviously, we just finished uh, Friends Like These a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Well, depending on... During Gen oh, Con. Yeah, right before Gen Con. So, um, for me, uh, that, was our, that was our first Urban Shadows campaign, or it was our first Powered by the Apocalypse campaign, and we had a great time. And in retrospect, because it's been over for a little while for us, is I would probably say that it has been... One of my favorite campaigns, if not the favorite campaign I've ever ran as a GM. And I've been having some conversations in our Facebook group with uh, certain fans and stuff like that, talking about how much fun we've had and how it kind of empowered our role-playing style and stuff like that. So we're really excited to look at the future of um, nerds and stuff and looking, about, looking at Powered by the Apocalypse systems and how they might be able to continue to improve our storytelling. Because if you've seen the whole series or enough of the series to become addicted, then you understand where we're coming from. The rules were super streamlined. We were able to just kind of live in the moment and act and react accordingly. So yeah. Um, Legacy of Ash? Yeah, Legacy let's talk about Legacy of Ash. Yeah. So um, I made a channel update a couple weeks back talking about how we were kind of on hiatus with that. Um, there was a lot of crazy things that happened this summer. Uh, Legacy of Ash has been in a weird kind of situation. Um, behind the scenes peak is that Jenny, who plays Rao Ray Var, left uh, Idaho for a six-month period to pursue an internship that was really critical to her uh, to her future in her career field. And so we had shot enough content to get ready for her to leave and we were gonna maybe do a little bit while she was gone, but we didn't want to get too far ahead of her uh, ahead without her. And so she just came back recently and then when she did get back, um, there was some stuff that happened in my life that made me in unable to run role playing games. And so we were um, trying to figure out what that looked like and, you know, recovering from that and stuff like that. So um, we are very close to shooting more Legacy of Ash. And uh, so we should expect that here within the next couple of weeks. I want to thank you all for being so patient with us. I know that there's been a lot of people who have been hounding me for more Legacy. I hear you. We're working on it. We're, we want to make sure that for any of you who have played role-playing games and taken time off in between you know, your campaign or during your campaign, you understand how hard it might be to come back. And so we want to make sure that when we do come back, 
we are ready to give it our all and we're ready to produce amazing content like we've been doing thus far. So we want to make sure that we're going to deliver the best product going forward and that's what's taken a little bit extra time for us to get back into Legacy. So thank you for your patience. We'll be back with more Legacy soon. Miniature painting! Miniature painting, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, hey. So, picked up some stuff at Gen Con, which we'll talk about, um, which will be hitting the channel soon. I still need to paint it. <laughs> um, but once I do and provide my usual bit... Hitting the channel. It'll hit it so hard. Yeah. <laughs> We've, we're going to um, talk about LARPing here yeah. at the very end, too, so... Yeah. That's coming up. Something to look forward to. No, don't, um. don't look forward to it. You'll be wo woefully disappointed. All right, I do have like a new video coming out, a new type of video, um, soon, the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's like a behind the scenes of my editing process. Uh, we've heard a lot of comments about people wondering how we do this. Like, what's it look like? You know, you guys just see ugly. one wall of this whole room. You know, there's a lot more going on here, like dogs running around and, you know, gunfire and stuff like that. Homeless people. We have to f chase them off camera. It's it's a real problem sometimes. We you also give them that. jobs as production assistants. <laughs> Pump them with sticks. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Yeah. You're doing great. You smell terrible. <laughs> just you're, just you're, stay over there you're and beautiful. Um, keep away from the needles. All right, let's friend. reel it back, maybe. <laughs> right. I don't know what we're doing. Um, <laughs> miniature painting, right. We're so I got this behind the scenes video. <laughs> It'll be coming out soon. And uh, otherwise... More still to come, same as the usual. TLDR, lots of Gen Con stuff, we hope. Yay! He, he spent a lot of money on miniatures at Gen I Con. I did, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a problem. He, yeah, he's in rehab now. We're actually, the second we finish shooting this, he's going to rehab. So when this comes yeah, out, hope, like, wish Daniel better. This isn't a watch, this is actually my tracking bracelet. Yeah, he's on parole. <laughs> Alright, uh, right, so now to the meat and potatoes of couch time. Nipples. No, Gen Con. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Gen Con. Uh, oh, um, oh, 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 update. Update. Oh. Website? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. That's hey, a thing. that's a really big update. Holy yeah. shit. We've got, a, we've got more updates. Wow. Um, we just <laughs> launched our website. You can go to www.nerdsandstuff.com. I'm not going to put it there. You're going to look should. like an asshole after Put it anyway. <laughs> no? Um, I'm going to put it right now, actually. Um, nerdsandstuff.com is our official website. Uh, it's still There's still a couple things under construction because I just learned how to do template stuff in websites. And so, it's kind of um, going, why does a YouTube channel have a website? Well, first of all, um, because we really want to get into podcasting. And uh, obviously, there's probably a lot of you who probably um, listen to our content a lot more than you watch our content, especially the role-playing content. So we are getting really close to being able to deliver you that podcast experience. Um, for everything that we've produced so far, we're just going to kind of strip the audio, uh, put it in a podcast form, and create... We have a really substantial backlog, so we're going to be able to deliver those Friends Like These, Legacy of Ash, and a couple of the one-shots into a podcast format so you can listen at your convenience um, at work or on your commute or anything like that. So that's the first phase of podcasting. That's the stuff that we can guarantee sooner than later. The other half of podcasting is uh, during Gen Con, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to the Gen Con stuff, because we're kind of back and forth, and that's my bad, um, <laughs> is that we uh, are getting a lot closer to wanting to buy equipment to do a great audio setup so we can um, compete in that market, which is a very uh, big market, right? Um, like I said, most of you probably listen to it, and the vast majority of people who consume role-playing actual play do it via podcast. And so we got into the YouTube scene because I'm a videographer, and that's where I felt comfortable, and that's where I had a strong knowledge base, and I wanted to deliver the best product going forward at the very start. But now that we're getting a really good feel for YouTubing, we want to continue to expand the brand and step into markets that we haven't been in yet, and that includes potential live streaming, definitely podcasting, and continuing to grow the brand and our campaigns and our role-playing quality as we step forward. So um, the website is to mainly host the podcasting. All of our videos are up there, minus um, some of the Couch Time stuff. We're, I'm still working on that, but all of our campaigns, all of our one-shots and all the miniature painting are on the website already. So check it out, nerdsandstuff.com. Um, leave us comments in this video uh, about the website. If you like it, uh, if you think it might need some improvements here or there, it's still a work in progress and I'm still trying to make it the best it can be. So um, thank you for your feedback and please check it out. Um, especially Patreon backers, you're making, the res you're making the website and the podcasting possible. So thank you so much. 
Um, right. Is that all the updates? I, I think, think that's okay. all the updates. We'll we come back to updates. To. We'll so, come back. We'll, uh, if we think yeah. of any other updates along the way, uh, we'll just throw them in as we think of them. Perfect. Sterling, let's yeah. talk about one-shots. Cool. Yeah. Uh, at Gen Con, we got a opportunity to play in a few one-shot campaigns. Um, a handful. Yeah, a yeah. handful. Um, but they're we, like, you know, two to four hours a piece, so a handful is a lot. Did yeah. a few different systems. Uh, we got a 7th C game in. We got a... Masks? Masks in. Um, Shadow and Run. Shadow Run. As well as Martin got to play some Call of Cthulhu. And it's my Call of Cthulhu. That's your Call of Cthulhu <laughs> sign. I think that's not like it. But. Or insane. I don't, know. I don't know. Yeah. So we did some one shots, um, and uh, we got to meet a fellow YouTuber by uh, the channel name of Sir Lucian, and uh, he actually ran Masks for us, and that was such a tremendous experience. Mm-hmm. It was a great game with great players, and he was a very uh, skillful GM. And we had a lot of fun running it. Sterling yeah. and I were, were playing in it as players, and we had a lot of fun. So uh, if you're watching this, thank you, Sir Lucian. Uh, we really appreciated you running that one shot for us. Time. Yeah. Um, panels. I'm going to let you start with panels. Right. I didn't get to go to mass because I'm not cool. But also, um, there Podcast. just weren't enough tickets. And there were a lot of panels that we wanted to have going forward to help us. A lot of them were like podcasting stuff. Mm-hmm. So while we were at Gen Con, I went to a lot of podcasting panels and uh, we learned a lot. And part of the reason why we're kind of slowing down on just popping out new stuff just like dedicated for podcasting is that we want to do this right the first time. You know, we don't want to get into the podcasting stuff and have to start making a whole bunch of changes with things like hosting or like equipment these sorts of things that can cause a, a podcast to fail or have its uh, its downloaders or its viewer listeners. That's the word. Hey. Its <laughs> listeners just leave. So you're talking about like, because we hit our goal for Patreon and the goal yeah. was website and podcasting. We right. just got the website up and um, podcasting is soon to follow. So um, we're still working through a lot of information. Yeah. There was a, a lot that uh, it's we a whole- learned out there and... It's a whole different medium. It's a medium that we don't have any experience with, uh, apart from just as a casual consumer. Filthy noobs. Filthy casuals. (laughs) We're filthy casual podcasters. But we research the shit out of everything. (laughs) So we'll get there. Daniel was definitely our workhorse during Gen Con and went off to like four pod or podcasting. Yeah. He definitely Panels. took lead. He definitely took lead on podcasting. So thank you. Yeah. So job, if your yeah, yeah. ears don't bleed in the future, it's this guy's. Uh, this guy to thank for that. If, if they, they do, do <laughs> it's Sterling's fault. It's always Sterling's oh, fault. Oh man. Yep. Perfect. Uh, Sterling and I, and I think Daniel went to um, a, a very few number of live streaming kind of things. Um, some of them were really knowledgeable, and some of them were stuff that we kind of already knew. We haven't gotten into the live streaming market because we are a very much tabletop experience. We love the social aspect of having everyone at the table. Uh, it creates an undeniable synergy between the players and the GM and stuff like that. So we're fairly hesitant to get into all of us being floating heads on a computer screen because that really changes the way tables role play, or groups role play. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of um, etiquette about not talking over each other that um, you know you should have at a tabletop setting, but I think it's technical difficulties. You know, two people talking over each other in a heated d- debate or argument in character, like friends like these, you can still make out what's going on in a tabletop experience, but online it just becomes audio noise. And so we we like the idea of live streaming and we're trying to figure out how to do that If we were to live stream the table with us all at the table, then that takes one person out of the game and puts them sitting at my computer managing the stream. And um, that's not the kind of idea of fun that I'd like to have either, is invite my friends over to stare at the internet while we play fun games. So we're still trying to figure out where the future of live streaming and nerds and stuff is. Um, We're not completely against it, but we really love the table dynamic that we have right Mm -hmm. now, and we also are really excited to get into podcasting. So live streaming, while not off the table, is pretty far in the future, I think, for us. So Sterling, uh, what were some of the other uh, kind of highlights from Gen Con for you? Um, For me, it was just... uh... Are we going to, like, just experiences, just awesome kind of stuff like that now? Yeah, just anything. Just Gen Gen Con. Con. Do you Gen Gen Con? Gen Con was... Some of the... A lot of these people haven't been. And it was all that I ever could hope it would be, plus more. Um, 
just the sheer amount of people and the community you really felt with in this four day experience of everyone loves the same things as you and you're not just four nerds sitting around a table talking um, about the same shit <laughs> but that there's really a ton of people out there that love to do it and uh we learned and grew and um were able to network and do a bunch of stuff to really help and grow the channel and bring more awesome content to you guys which i thought was awesome yeah perfect daniel highlights the gen con um gen con is an incredible experience like i've been to conventions before I've been to busy conventions before. Gen Con is massive. We had a panel end and like one of our actual plays start, and they were kind of on opposite corners hmm. of the campus that Gen Con was at. And it took us like 15 minutes, I think, speed walking to get there. Like going as fast as we could to get all the way across this campus. And Martin has really long legs, so he's really hard to keep up with. <laughs> Uh, which is something legs. I normally n don't have a problem with, but... Uh, it's my ranger walk from when I was in the Army. It was in the Indiana Convention Center, the surrounding hotels that are connected via Skywalks, and Lucas Oil Stadium, which is where the uh, the Colts, I think, is the yeah. sports ball team. The sports ball team, the Colts, <laughs> yep. Where they play. Yeah. So they had it's a, a concert there, too. That yeah. It was, like, across town that sold out in, like, 20 minutes or something yeah. like that. So I think there uh, there was I, something was like 230,000 people yeah, at Turnstile Ticket. Yeah, was yeah, huge. Turnstile. So um, for me, this was my third time going. I really wanted to make sure that these guys had an amazing time and that they bit off as much as they wanted to chew because a lot of first-time recommendations for Gen Con is don't plan too much. Have time to explore the Expo Hall because it is insane. Uh, it is also very dangerous to walk through the expo <laughs> hall because that is where your money goes. It yep. just disappears. Yeah, your you just wallet, open your wallet and it just yep. flies out. Everywhere. Money just flies out. So um, yeah, but you bring board games back, so that's yep. nice. and models <laughs> and regretful purchases. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, for me, this being my third time and uh, us being a year into nerds and stuff, I really wanted to uh, shore up all of the stuff for me, kind of running this. Uh, this product, this brand, growing it and networking and seeing what the future can bring. So I, I wanted to make sure that we had a good handle for future podcasting, um, that I was I was able to network like crazy this year. And I met a ton of really cool podcasters, content creators, and um, publishers, and uh, just had an amazing time. Got a lot of role-playing systems for the channel. I think between the three of us, we ended up buying seven or eight systems and then some supplements and some miniatures and a lot of this was for use in the channel for us to bring to you over the next year before the next gen con hopefully so we've got a lot of fun stuff happening and uh i've pretty much read a role-playing book every night since i got back from gen con and it's been a week so I'm, I'm i'm pretty hyped <laughs> I'm pretty hyped uh yeah so also we have shirts uh right now we look like a mint oreo so um but yeah we just got embroidered shirts for gen con we got uh promo cards and we got our website, so we got a lot of fun, like businessy looking things going on, and we're starting to feel like professionals and or adults. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so that was kind of the the main Gen Con experience for me was mostly just shoring up some of the loose ends of trying to grow the brand and mm -hmm. trying to reach more of an audience because we are always so overwhelmed by how cool you guys are and ladies. And um, we want to continue to grow our audience and figure out the best ways to do that, um, to bring our quality product to the masses. So, Well, in the larger audience that we can find, uh, the more cool things we can pr bring to the table. So like, if we can continue to grow like we have been, which has been phenomenal, um, we also just recently passed 3,000 subs. So that's yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And 150,000 views on YouTube, which is really cool. So. But if we can continue to grow and get bigger, we can start doing a lot more cool things and maybe starting to attend cons as a formal entity and um, who knows what the future may hold. I think in future years what would be really cool is uh, to not just go to the panels, but run panels, right. talk about our experiences and stuff like that. I think that would be really cool as well. Um, we have a really cool opportunity coming up in the next month for the Snake River Comic Con. Not all the details are completely solid yet, but if you live in the Southeast Idaho area or nearby vicinity, uh, the Snake River Comic Con, 
Um, Nerds and Stuff is a featured guest, and we will be uh, there in some fashion, whether it be to do a live play of a role-playing game or host panels or anything like that. We're still working out the details in the next weeks to come, so um, stay tuned for that. But we're posting about it on our uh, Facebook page as well as um, our some of our other social media platforms. So that's a really cool experience as well, so we're really excited for it. As soon as we know details, we'll be sharing them in like the Facebook group too. So if you're not a part of that... Um yeah, there will be a link in the description for the Facebook yeah. group. Yeah, Come join us. And that's where all the super fans hang out. And some of the lurkers. We are watching you, We lurkers. still love you. <laughs> but I'm watching you, lurker. Um, <laughs> right. So the uh, pinnacle of Gen Con every single year for me is the One Shot Meetup, hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network, uh, primarily uh, James D'Amato and Cat Cool. Um, they run the One Shot Podcast and Campaign Podcast, which was... Uh, it's a very prolific podcast. They both are. Mm -hmm. um, they're super entertaining. I have talked about them in the past on this channel and how they, they run an Edge of the Empire campaign as well, which is hilarious. Um, a lot of uh, Chicago-based improv comedians uh, entertain you endlessly. So um, if you haven't seen that before, check it out. Uh, same thing for the One Shot podcast. They do one shots in a ton of different systems. It was James's idea to do a one-shot in every system. I think there's a lot more systems coming out than James can manage <laughs> to run, but he does an amazing job. He's an amazing GM, and um, they're seeing insane growth right now, too, and a lot of the panels we went to this year were hosted by them and their network, and we got some amazing information from that. So um, the meetup, they host a yearly meetup at Gen Con for podcasters, for fans, for people who love what they do, and want to be um, in that same sphere to celebrate what they're doing. And this is my second time going to the meetup. And every single year, I'm just overwhelmed by how cool everyone is and how much fun it is. And um, really, the opportunities that come from that as a content creator and as a fan of their brand, uh, to be able to exchange ideas with other people, meet some of the artwork people that they use, meet some of the, you know, talk to them kind of one-on-one -on -one and get to learn more about what I'm doing and what they're doing. And, um, you know, just that, that whole experience is just, it's, it's amazing every single year. So, uh, thank you. If, <laughs> if any of you from the one shot podcast network are watching so much, thank you so much. This year was amazing. Um, we had such amazing time. Well, it, was, it was so great to be able to meet you guys. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the times when you encounter celebrities you really like, they have that celebrity status. And it was just awesome to be able to meet you guys and be, like, real fantastic people and all the people that are involved with what you guys do. Just a bunch of awesome people. Yeah. Nerds. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Um, for me, really the early story of nerds and stuff is Martin coming to me and saying, hey, I've got this podcast you should listen to. It's called Campaign. And then a couple months later saying, hey, we should start a podcast. But really without one shot, I don't think we would be here doing this. So the chance to meet them and uh, really rub shoulders with a bunch of people in the same um, mind thought that just love role-playing games and love doing this was awesome. Yeah, so that's pretty much our Gen Con experience. We did ask um, our Facebook group for any questions that they might have, and so we had a couple. Um, so I'll grab, uh, these questions are from Tomas first. Um, he says that uh, with Darker, and this is from, I asked for Gen Con questions and for potential friends like these questions because we just finished our campaign. Mm -hmm. So his first question is, with Darker Tones present in some of your sessions, where is the line that you wouldn't cross or dare to explore? So um, I think that's, that's kind of a difficult question to answer because you don't know how you're going to feel about a topic until mm -hmm. you hit that or until you cross the line past it. Um, I don't ever approach a scenario, and it's really hard because Friends Like These was such a sandbox, um, especially way early on. We were just kind of rolling with the punches. And um, I think more than anything, it comes back to table trust. We all trusted each other to understand the kind of story we wanted to tell. And when we started out the entire um, campaign, we sat down as a group off camera and said, what kind of story do we want to tell? What kind of tones and themes do we want present? And um, 
you know, we didn't talk about content because we wanted to keep it a true sandbox, but we talked about the feel of it. And uh, we shot a couple sessions, maybe a session or two of the campaign, and we shot the trailer because we definitely had a good feel for where the tone was already. Um, so as far as content that we wouldn't cross, it's very difficult to answer. Um, it's hard to give specifics. Like, in the Urban Shadow setting itself, there's something called an X card. This is a part of the rules of the game. You're supposed to take and like take an index card or something, put an X on it, and put it in the middle of the table. If at any time you're approaching something that makes anyone on the table uncomfortable, all they have to do is just hit that X card. No and questions then you back asked. It up. Yep. No questions asked, and you just figure out, go forward, pivot. We talked about having our own X card, and then just decided that we know each other well enough. Junior is he played uh, Jake, uh, Jake Gordon. He's an old friend of ours. We've been playing games with him for a while. And so we know him really well. And because we know each other that well, we know what we can and can't approach. Now, with that being said, though, it is important for you to have X card opportunities. Right. It doesn't matter how well you know your table. Because one thing that Daniel didn't mention is that we cut often. And if there is something that we don't want in, we cut it out. We had that opportunity as a role-playing table. And sometimes it got tense at our table, and we would cut stuff out, you know? And so we had a very similar experience to the X card through our production. We wanted to make sure that some of the stuff didn't make it on camera because it might have been um, too dark or too... Um, Just too much. Too much, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, if you ever play a game like that, we highly encourage you to use X cards and or figure out a system that works best for you like we did. Um, right, next question. Uh, uh, time is something many groups struggle with. Uh, some play via online webcams while others set a single day of the week reserved for games. How do you and your players uh, manage to gather for sessions? We've talked about this in the past. Um, we, pl we try to play once a week as, much as, as often as possible. Um, it is very difficult. We all have jobs. Uh, we're going to school different things. Life finds a way to make you incredibly busy. I'm having a daughter in January that's going to really complicate things. So we need to figure out and talk as a group. But ideally, I, I, I talk to some fans and they play once a month and that breaks my damn heart. <laughs> um, but we, we try and play once a week. But what it really comes back to is maybe we'll play two to three times a month, honestly. And when we do play, we sit down and we try and create as much content as possible, but a lot of times the games that we play might be really exhausting or mentally draining, so we might not get as much sessions. But we try and meet once a week to create content, and that can create a little bit of backlog for us, which will give us a little bit of an opportunity to explore other systems or uh, take a break in between production and stuff like that. So once a week for us, um, but it really comes down to two to three times a month. So, last question, um, how was your Gen Con, everyone? Uh, what interesting board games and RPGs have you discovered? How was meeting people from Magpie Games? Um, so I'll talk about Magpie Games first. Uh, they are a publisher that I got to email back and forth with uh, when we were getting ready to start Friends Like These. We had created the trailer, and I had emailed Magpie and said, hey, we made a trailer for your game for our upcoming campaign. What do you think? And they got back to us and they said, wow. This is really amazing. Um, and we had you know, put a lot of time and energy into that and the idea of it. And um, I've been working back and forth with them. We set up that 30% off promo code for the first month of Friends Like These. And you know, we have some of their product on my shelves right now getting ready to run, getting thinking about the future of running their games. And so I got to meet uh, Sarah Richardson and um, Marissa Kelly and Mark Diaz Truman, uh, all I think co-founders or very high individuals in the uh, publishing company and that was incredibly cool. It was really cool meeting them and we're really excited to run a number of their products. They create amazing Powered by the Apocalypse systems and that is really what our table loves to run. So we're definitely getting ready to play Masks. Uh, I've been reading Velvet Glove, which is very exciting. Um, Apillion, which we're going to do an over-the-top PG-rated role-playing one-shot. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be ridiculous, I think, <clears throat> more than incredible. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was my experience with meeting Magpie. Um, what, what, uh, you want to talk about the role-playing game you picked up? Uh, yeah, I picked a couple of role-playing games up. Um, 
the main one I'm super excited for is called Pugmire. It is a uh, D&D 5e skin that is uh, set after the Age of Man. Man has left Earth for some reason or another, and dogs are now the dominant sentient beings. And so it's a uh, role-playing game where you get to play as anthropomorphic dogs living in the world, fighting with swords and magic. And it is over-the-top ridiculous and awesome. Yep. So when we do run that in, in time, it will be equally ridiculous as well. <laughs> um, we, we didn't pick up too many board games. I didn't pick up any board games. I know his brother came with us, and he picked up all the board games ever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, he was in trouble at, like, day three yep. <laughs> for spending yeah. too much money on board games. So um, not too many board games. For me, it was this, this entire con experience was role-playing games and networking and socializing and stuff like that. So... Um, Right, we got uh, one more. We got questions from another fan, uh, Tony Johnston, and this is going to be a lightning round um, because there's a lot of questions here and we don't want to get out in the weeds for too many. Uh, does the significant others ever play role playing with you guys, mainly in games, but whatever, uh, but share whatever you want? So um, I relentlessly ask my wife to play uh, role playing games with me, and uh, she never does. So she used to, but I think she has. Uh, just decided that that is me time and me and my friends time and so i think she is very much happy not playing them anymore <laughs> no matter how much i ask the first time i actually played rpgs it was with his wife yeah but... it was a sexual thing though <laughs> <laughs> different role play yeah different, different role, role play, play. Uh, I know you're getting married soon. You're yeah, currently engaged. And, uh, yeah, she has no interest in role-playing games whatsoever. <laughs> so, yeah. love you, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, so, um, not, not so much. Not so much. Uh, if you do, God bless you. <laughs> um, and I fly solo. <laughs> there you go. Um, he's married to the channel at this point. Uh, I would like to see Martin be part of the Dread Pulling. Is, is this even possible? Since I think he writes the story or be a player or something... Uh, like he played a character like Junior did in Friends Like These. Uh, I think Tony just wants to see me squirm. <laughs> um, he uses a quote, uh, the whole story is basically Sarah asking uh, Jake, why are you out so late, honey? <laughs> um, which was one of my favorite. I, I love making Junior squirm, so I think it's only fair for fans like Tony to want to see me squirm in return. Um, these guys uh, have been highly encouraged to uh, GM, um, I think they're definitely getting closer to the, the idea of it. Uh, we're still trying to figure out logistics. It's not um, that they don't want to or that I don't want them to or anything like that. It's just timing. When we, when we try to get as much done as we're getting done, uh, some of us live out of town. Some of us uh, have very difficult schedules to work around. It, it complicates things when we're trying to create content like finishing campaigns like Friends Like These or Legacy of Ash running one-shots. Obviously, we, we don't run a ton of one-shots on the channel, not nearly as much as we'd like to. Um, and that just comes back to scheduling and fatigue and ch channel maintenance and doing all the other stuff they want to do to grow the brand. I am absolutely in, sub in favor of being a player at the table. I've actually played as a player on Nerds and Stuff content in our uh, fiasco run-throughs. Um, so you get to see a little bit of, uh, that's a GM-less <laughs> system, so it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, if you haven't seen them, we have two different full run-throughs of Fiasco. So we, we can't promise anything, but we can say that we're definitely in talks about running stuff soon with these guys as GMs for one-shots or really short stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Pretty much, if, if we run a one-shot, um, we only really get one gaming day a week. So whatever we run, if you know Sterling or I were to run something, it would be a night that Martin's not running something. So, and you know, in, until we can get campaigns flowing back again and kind of back where we want to be, we kind of need to stick there for now. Yeah. Uh, Tony asked, what do you guys think of the eclipse? Um, we live in southeast Idaho, so we were insanely close to the total eclipse. Um, in fact, he lives uh, in one of the places was completely darked out. So I'll let you guys talk about it. I had a pretty lackluster experience. I stayed in Pocatello, where we're, where I live, and we got 98% or something, which wasn't the magical uh, zone. So I'll let you guys talk about the eclipse. <laughs> right. Don't get too... So, don't, not too much, though. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. turn the physics off. Um, when you hit 98%, your excitement's here. Uh, when you hit totality, your excitement's, like, all the way up here. It's really, really incredible. Like, yeah. it, it's something that I'm still struggling to describe well, uh, because it's just, it's such a surreal experience. It was super cool for two minutes, and then I got to drive five hours, 50 <laughs> miles back home, so... Yeah. 
So, was it worth the experience? Yeah, it was yeah. awesome, but uh, that drive was terrible. Just... Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, I think you guys mentioned something like this before. I don't remember the answer. Do you guys have any interest in D&D fantasy-type RPGs? D&D? Yes, we What's do. That? We <laughs> all cut our teeth on D&D. We all started playing D&D. I started with 3.0, then moving on to 3.5, and then I introduced both of these to 4.0, and then we played a full year-long campaign in 5th edition. We I actually played... played 50 before 4E. Did you really? I played... The... Next was the beginner box I started on. I'm oh, sorry wow. you had wow. to go back to 4th. <laughs> yeah, there yep. you go. So um, we, we have played a lot of Dungeons & Dragons in the past. Um, let's talk super briefly about why we don't play Dungeons and Dragons on the channel right now. We, it's not that we don't love Dungeons and Dragons. Um, the market is insanely saturated. Mm -hmm. So as a business standpoint, as a brand standpoint, everyone and their mom has a D and D actual play, whether it be YouTube, podcast, uh, live stream, etc. Um, in fact, the Twitch channel is just Dungeons & Dragons. It's not role-playing right. games. It's not tabletop role-playing games. It's just Dungeons & Dragons. Mm -hmm. So if you want to live stream role-playing games, you kind of have to play under Dungeons & Dragons. It's it's the mainstream standard right now. Um, we, like, weeks before we started this, this whole journey, we had finished a year-long 5e campaign. I was in no hurry to return to it. It, at the time, had been the best campaign I had ever ran um, with these two and Junior as the primary mm. players. So the entire cast of Friends Like These. So if you're in love with that, you can imagine 5e e kind of yeah. like that. It's 100 plus hours. We've talked about it in previous Couch Times. It's a campaign called The Flat Circle. We recorded everything on audio, and uh, we very much would like to put that up online as an audio file or as video without um, any sort of visual aspects or components so you can listen to it. Um, we're just trying to figure it out. We had we did not shoot it to be a true podcast. We recorded it for us to listen to in the future when we're working on projects or playing video games or something like that. So we recorded it for our own selves, but it's still very entertaining for us. And um, if you kind of love the games that we play, I can't imagine you wouldn't like our D&D campaign that we played. We're just trying to figure out how to get it out there. So we, we do like playing fantasy games. I think with the games we've been playing this last year mm -hmm. is just playing as much as we can casting as big of a net as possible to attract newcomers to the channel you know a lot of you found us through dread a lot of you found us through edge of the empire if we just played D&D, we would just be another brick in the wall um but you guys probably found us because you were looking for something besides D, &D. and so it's it's very difficult because the market is saturated but it's also the market so as a brand perspective, um, I'll let you guys talk real briefly about your D&D &D experiences. Now, that being said, I still really enjoy d and I still follow a lot of what comes out and stuff like that. Sterling and I talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of high fantasy type settings and rule sets out there that we may be able to explore at some point. Um, we've had some recommended to us. We're looking into them. Uh, we even found one powered by the Apocalypse System. Namely, that, Dungeon World. Dungeon World, yep. that we're looking through right now, that's definitely a possibility. We would probably see a return to that setting before we see a return to that game, if that makes sense. We'll go back to high fantasy probably before we hit D&D. And when, we first, when I first started this journey with these guys... Which hurts, because um, I miss high fantasy. When we first, yeah, so when we first started this whole journey, these guys were... These guys love D&D way more than I do. I... I like it a lot. I was a beta tester for 5e. I've played a lot of d and in my time. I have not played a lot of uh, Apocalypse. I have not played a lot of uh, different genres. And so was, I, 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 I used to write a lot in a book that I started when I was younger. And I'm like 100,000 words in, and it's a high fantasy book. I've had a lot of high fantasy time in my life, and I'm, I'm to the point where... I want to see what else is out there. And so it's really hard every single time I pitch a new campaign. For a long time, in the back of their heads was like, oh, I really want this to be D&D, but I guess I'll play it because Martin's <laughs> running it, and we'll see where it goes. And those turned into Legacy of Ash and friends like these, which we have a lot of fun, but yeah. I, I knew that there was always like a weird twang in the back of their minds where it was like, well, it could be Curse of Strahd. <laughs> you know, so um, I think we, we absolutely love D&D, and they put out a fantastic product. I think I, as a GM as a primary GM for a group, just kind of have system fatigue. And 
D20 systems can be really clunky. If you if you stop drinking the Kool-Aid for a second, uh, you can see that fail forward systems and streamline systems are a lot can be a lot more fun, mm -hmm. can be a lot more fun based on your group. And when we're doing stuff on the channel, we don't want 40 minutes of combat. That's not entertaining. It's it's hard to make entertaining. It's hard to follow as a listener. It yeah. absolutely is. So we want to play games where the the story and the drama are up front first behind the mechanics. Uh, favorite holiday? For me, Halloween. Because uh, you get to dress up like a weirdo and I'm a nerd. Uh, I was going to say Halloween because I love candy. Deal. Uh, Halloween, say it. Halloween! <laughs> hey! Because I like to dress up. Hey! Huh. That's why we sometimes do live streams and stuff. Uh, why don't we cosplay? <laughs> because it's too much work. I like buying my costume. Yeah. Uh, favorite movie? Um, I love Star Wars. Um, my my all-time favorite movie is probably uh, Stranger Than Fiction with Will Ferrell, which is a really weird movie. Um, favorite movie, go! Yeah, I gotta probably uh, go with uh, favorite movie, Scott go. Pilgrim vs. The World. Okay. Uh, favorite uh, movie, go! Just one? Just okay, fun. so I love Star Wars, but uh, I never turned down an opportunity to watch Fifth Element. Perfect. Uh, thoughts on LARPing? Hard pass. Uh, looks like fun, but probably not for me. I'd be willing to try it. <laughs> we just don't have an opportunity to meet people like that, because we live in Idaho and there's nothing here. Hard pass. Uh, thoughts on cosplay? Um, looks like fun, probably not for me. <laughs> I don't have the attention to detail, I think, uh, and the creativity to do uh, costume design. But I'm def desperately trying to get Kat Pretzer, um, who plays uh, Trizlock on the channel, to start doing cosplay 101 stuff. I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly the sex stuff of cosplay, though. Um, favorite uh, drink while RPGing? Um, I love Dr. Pepper. That is the nectar of the gods for me. Uh... Anything by Monster or Rockstar. Yeah, these, these guys. Or uh, the Lime Cucumber Gatorade is great. It's usually a, a zero calorie Monster or Rockstar for me. Oh, yeah. Screw zero calorie. Yeah. Do you guys collect <laughs> anything? Souls. <laughs> Tears of Children. Comic books? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. One of these is not like the others. <laughs> All right, Tony, thank you One for your questions. Uh, thank you, Tomas. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Couch Time. Uh, we are going to go and read more role-playing books and uh, think and discuss the intricacies of podcasting, the mysteries of audio, of us entering your ears and cerebellums. Um, right, <laughs> so that is us for this time. Uh, we will see you again for more Couch Time, and we will see you again even sooner for other content on the channel. Thank you so much for watching us. Um, I'm Martin. I'm Sterling. And I'm Daniel. And, and we're, we're nerds, nerds and stuff. stuff. We that don't really usually sad. do this as it is. We're wow. doing I like it. it. Hey. I like it, though. It's a <laughs> you, you doubted it, and that was the tone was so flat. <laughs> tone yeah, was so flat. You're just like, pitch there. That's yeah, what you we're nerds and okay, stuff. Maybe we should give that another shot. No, we're good. No, oh, That's well, it. Fine. This That's is the part where we dance the channel out. Uh, yeah, so this is... Yeah, I... Um, kind of promise. Oh, fans were promised. Sterling and Dan... We have a dance. Do we? The Legacy of Ash Dance. Show them. Show them. Show them. I promised they, that you two would dance, so enjoy. Okay. <laughs>